Slava Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Igor. Um, I typed uh, several uh, of your uh, requests here and I will sum up at the end of the meeting and uh, we'll send to all of the researchers that are more than 800 in our mentoring program so that everyone knows how we could, uh, uh, because you understand it's not possible for everyone to join today. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, so uh, if you have anything else to add, please send it to Sasha and to me. We will prepare this document and uh, send to, to everyone uh, later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry, but I really have to leave this meeting. It's very important for me to participate in this meeting because okay. I know you have to you have to understand us rightly right now, what we have to do in Kyiv, in our capital. We look in new way, how to support, how to help Ukrainian students, school boys, school girls, everyone, because Ukraine scientists activity is very important for all the world. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you very much again. And uh, now we will come back to our, um, original plan. I will start uh, sharing now my screen and show you uh, my uh, presentation. Uh, just for um, just a second. Um, for a few minutes to introduce the um, to introduce the program and then uh, I will give the floor to other of uh, our invited speakers. So now let me, yes, I found it. So again, just uh, um, to uh, repeat once more, we have uh, to our today meeting invited speakers that uh, we just hear Igor Taranov, uh, the Director General of the Directorate of Science and Innovation at the Ministry of Education and Science. Uh, we have a representative from Young Scientist Council. Um, I didn't see her in the list of um, uh, attended people currently, but uh, she will join maybe any yeah. moment. Uh -huh. Yes, Atana, she will join in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's perfect. And uh, Sasha Ivashchenko, just uh, Alexandra, uh, you just uh, heard her. Uh, Sasha works for, uh, as a volunteer, uh, works for the um, now already very huge platform, Science for Ukraine. This is a volunteer uh, platform, and you'll learn a bit uh, uh, later about it more. For now, in order to go uh, fast through the um, program today, uh, we will see the uh, details about the update about the program and uh, we will hear then uh, Sasha and her colleague from Young Scientists and then Young Researchers. And then um, we will concentrate on what to do first after registering, this is about uh, to introduce to our Ukrainian guests today how they could benefit faster and the best to take the best out from this uh, program. Then uh, our mentors and we, we will share some tips and practical advice and we will continue with discussions, questions and answers. So what about the program? Currently we have registered um, 822 researchers from all over the world and uh, uh, out of them we have 164 mentors. This is not too much 
uh, seeing the whole number of researchers, but our mentors are very devoted persons and many of them take two, three, even more than, uh, than that uh, um, mentees. And uh, with today's session, we will appeal to them to take at least one Ukrainian researcher as soon as possible for them. Currently we have um, either working or already finished 170 couples. And this is, um, I'm very proud with this fact. This is a, an amazing outcome for only one year and two months. Uh, the picture you see here on this slide represents uh, the, uh, the website. And you can find out if you are registered that there are more than uh, 30 main specialties, researchers with uh, 30 main specialties, and the researchers that are based in more than 50 countries. The link that I provide here is for those that are not members of the program yet. Uh, and join our today meeting just to understand and to learn more about it. So my appeal is we need more mentors. If you uh, have a colleague or you personally are interested to contribute to the development of the uh, world research system, please join. This is a volunteer work indeed. And it takes time, but it is very, very well balanced and it doesn't take uh, amazing part of your time. It takes one meeting per month. So it is um, uh, envisaged that you can share this uh, responsibility with all others that you have or you can use your summer break in order to take at this point uh, a researcher as a mentee. But believe me, all young researchers all over the world are very happy with your help. So whoever is interested, please join. We have six predefined topics and um, the, you, uh, the researchers that join have to choose at least three of them in their mentoring plan. Uh, since the very beginning, um, the rating of these topics, I mean, the, the most often chosen topics still keep the same uh, 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 rating and uh, Career counseling is on the top. Second is publication and presentations. Of course, this is a very important uh, uh, topic for every young researcher. So publication and presentations uh, are really uh, very, uh, very uh, often chosen. And most of our mentors can support you with that. Funding opportunities is very important, especially at the moment with the Ukrainian researchers. And uh, if someone of you takes a Ukrainian researcher, please put this topic in your mentoring plan because you have to go in detail what is offered in your country and what uh, is offered in your organization if there is something, of course. Uh, this map I took from Google Analytics and it shows the number of visits in, on our websites that grows uh, very fast. Only for the last month, we have 300 more um, visits per month than before. And um, from Ukraine that you see in the smaller, uh, the smaller map. Um, the, the highest number from uh, um, their regions is five, but it is only from one region, five. 
So uh, I suppose with today meeting, our visits from Ukraine will grow. Uh, another interesting, um, um, and that keeps from the very beginning this ratio uh, graph, shows the number of female and uh, male researchers that are uh, interested in uh, visiting this website. Uh, female prevail, and I'm very happy with this fact because um, female researchers, uh, you understand this very well, need specific and uh, um, higher, uh, bigger support from our site in their research career. Uh, the interesting and a very nice fact for me is that um, the number of young researchers is uh, constantly increasing. Every next month, they go up and up. We established a LinkedIn group for discussion and sharing. You may not be a member of the mentoring program, but you can join this group. In order to see how the program goes and uh, who is in there and what are the news from the program. So uh, only for four months that this uh, LinkedIn group uh, works, it got already 250 members. And uh, most of our posts are related to lectures, webinars that we offer, news and upcoming events, comments, impressions, recognition. Uh, we introduce our mentors in there by a short um, bio. And uh, we, of course, post uh, some interesting job announcements. In our monthly meeting, we arranged a constantly open um, survey and you can uh, add there your comments. The link is at the bottom of the slide. You'll have this presentation after the, um, after the meeting. So you'll have also the link and you can share your opinion. But up to now, uh, these percentages uh, change from time to time, but up to now, highest interest brings uh, sharing experience. Uh, people are interested to know how the program works. Um, relevant news from your access, of course, are of interest of uh, everyone and our side of activities, like web webinar training um, and uh, other options for researchers. By this, I will stop at the moment to this part of the presentation. And uh, we'll continue later on uh, after Sasha and uh, Evgenia. Sasha, I don't see Evgenia joining us, but anyway, if you uh, can, you can, if you'd like, you can talk now and present the Science for Ukraine platform. And later on, I will continue. And whenever she joins, we uh, will be able to give her the floor. What do you think? Yeah, that's. Um, I'm, I'm just. Um, I'm. I'm just double checking with her. Uh, yeah, I, I just texted her to make sure that she will join. I would be happy to present the platform. Yes. Um, I do not have the slides, but I would like to explain to you what the platform does. Uh, just first of all, by you may share it. Yeah, yeah, I will show. Internet. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, I also participate in this platform as a volunteer. Yes. Yes. Uh, Svetlana is one of our uh, national coordinators. She's a national coordinator for Bulgaria, and it's an amazing asset. And yeah, uh, she's the reason why this meeting. Um, was organized. So I would like to show first to share my screen. Okay. Um, share. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I hope that you can see my screen. Yes, uh, we okay. see it perfectly. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, Science for Ukraine, uh, it's a volunteer in the organization, as uh, Svetlana mentioned already, that was created on the second day of the war. 
And um, um, its main goal is to address one big problem. So when, unfortunately, when the war started, uh, but when the war started, there were um, there was an influx of various opportunities that people wanted to offer, and they are very decentralized. So they are on university level, national level, and now we also see, of course, uh, the European Commission coming with amazing opportunities. Uh, but uh, we decided to create a, um, a platform that centralizes all of these opportunities. So it's called so-called Science for Ukraine. It started with a Twitter and eventually we added various social platforms. And um, on our website, you can see a lot of opportunities. So there's an interactive map. Uh, you can filter based on the uh, opportunity level. You can go to uh, kind of uh, uh, um, uh, the, the standard job listing opportunities for uh, researchers and whether they are in Ukraine or flat Ukraine, they can, for example, filter on remote work if they're in Ukraine and look for either temporary employment opportunities if they cannot work um, uh, at the moment, uh, or uh, they can also go to uh, funding opportunities. That's something that we, we have a web page where there are international listings uh, for funding and support opportunities, including the mentoring. Yeah, so Eura for Ukraine is, of course, the first one, a very important platform for Europe, and the mentoring platform is also mentioned there. Uh, and there are various opportunities that they can use to apply for funding. Uh, or digital mobility, you can they can go per country and and and, and see them. Uh, so what um, what the, it started with two people. Now there are 170 people, and uh, the platform grew really fast. Um, and uh, um, we provide various uh, support opportunities. So first of all, we collect information about funding opportunities uh, and job opportunities. We centralize them. Uh, we disseminate them towards Ukrainian people. We, we help uh, uh, we help uh, find suitable opportunities. So uh, since we are volunteers, we prefer uh, if uh, scientists or students use contact details. So for each listing, we have with their checked and their contact details. Uh, but they can also contact us or universities uh, looking for collaboration either in Europe or the other way around European universities looking for collaboration in Ukraine. And we try to provide a link. Uh, and since we provide that support, uh, organization evolved. And we also started collecting information regarding needs. So we started collecting a lot of like a service and the feedback from Ukrainian university, but also the other way around and trying to communicate with various stakeholders including uh, um, scholars at risk, International Science Council. Also now we are uh, networks like Eclipse or, or communicating to European Commission the necessarily needs that uh, Ukrainian uh, scientific community has. And one of those very important shifts was the understanding that um, a majority of Ukrainian scientists will remain in Ukraine. 55% of Ukrainian scientists are uh, men. Uh, so they, they, if they are under 18 or uh, if they are older than 18 uh, or an, uh, an under 60, they are not allowed to leave the country because of the martial law. So we have 45% that are female, and many of them will not leave either for personal reasons, like that they do not want to leave part of their family behind, another, uh, and uh, um, or it will be just not possible. Uh, that's why they started requesting additional support opportunities. So we are talking about remote um, uh, remote fellowships and employment of scientists. Uh, what will be arranged, and that's something that uh, European Commission should help and bigger funding agencies should help. But what was very important that um, it will take a long time to arrange them. But what is possible in relatively short amount of time, and that's something that is very beneficial and very important for Ukrainian scientists, is the possibility to develop themselves. So we are talking about mentoring uh, programs. Even if there, uh, if if we are to, if 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 we are opening grants, uh, and, and special calls for Horizon, many Ukrainian scientists do not have. Um, um, a lot of, exp of the percentage of Ukrainian scientists that have uh, that, that are successfully getting 
um, European grants is relatively low. So it is important to mentor and increase that number. So to have a dedicated mentoring regarding to funding. The same applies to maximizing the reach towards international uh, journals. So we, we are talking about anti to writing. Uh, uh, the very big problem at the moment is for PhD students and doctoral students uh, whose education was interrupted. And at the moment, they often cannot work uh, on location, and but need to continue developing. And various mentoring schemes and also access to dedicated webinars um, is one of very real and imminent needs that cannot be uh, addressed with, in, in, by an international scientific community. Um, yeah, and um, of course, the Euro Access Mentoring Program is a great example of, um, of that. Uh, that's the beginning. I, uh, there are really a lot of there, there are thousands of thousands of scientists. So we cannot address this need only with Euro Access, pro, uh, Euro Access Mentoring Program. It is important to um, involve more people. Even with Science for Ukraine, we started even before Euro Access. Uh, we started promoting the Access Mentoring Program. We created UK-specific uh, mentoring program via Science for Ukraine, where we have already 150 uh, volunteers, mentors registered. Uh, and that started, and it's important to understand that the, a mentoring program like that didn't exist. Uh, this bottom-up approach and engagement of um, approach towards scientists and asking them to provide a support if they are university or uh, country might not be will, uh, able to do at the moment is a very powerful approach. Uh, our UK mentoring program started as a result of complicated immigrational procedure for the UK. And at the moment, we are already successfully mentoring um, up to 200 Ukrainian scientists. And that's the support that can be provided now so that by the time global funding schemes and a digital mobility can become available, that are available at the moment, but on way lower scale that is needed, um, scientists will be able to have a better skills at succeeding in them. Um, yeah, and um, that's regarding mentoring. At the end, I would like to once again, uh, bring your attention to the fact that uh, mentoring is not, um, it is very important to have, um, at the moment it's very important to have a regularity uh, um, in the calls and announcements. Uh, so uh, mentoring, uh, we, we promote, we have a very wide reach of social media, so we have over 10,000 followers on, on Twitter, we have more than 3,000 uh, unique uh, visits from uh, Ukraine to the website. We promote all opportunities that become available, but not everyone is always able to attend them because it, the country is at the war and the, con the uh, internet connection is unstable. So it's very important for all the initiatives and calls that will be there to have a regularity to try because we also see that with the uh, Eclipse the regular call that we started weekly, uh, uh, at first, the number of participants was slow, and now it's started growing. And also, especially retrospective recordings via Zoom, that's very useful that people can view them. Uh, and the same applies to um, webinars. That's something that haven't been addressed yet uh, on a global scale. There is a very, very high need for professional webinars and trainings that can be that should be planned in advance and shared with. Uh, Ukrainian community, we can be, um, uh, is of course has resources to do that. We would be happy to facilitate that. And um, those skills and those webinars should be prepared on various levels because we have support personnel, uh, we have uh, senior scientists, we have PhD and postdoc, and most importantly, we shouldn't forget that there is, um, there is administration staff uh, and personnel at universities. Um, that are largely forgotten. None of the initiatives target that. And all of them, and mainly them, they will be strongly affected by salary cuts that are happening in Ukraine already. And we should, um, it is important to consider that inseparable part of 
academic society because the university cannot function without them. It is important to provide certain, maybe dedicated webinars or also uh, in, in your mentoring program, maybe consider opportunities that are suitable for these people. Thank you very much, uh, Sasha. What uh, we can do is actually, um, there is even uh, webinars that I still didn't send to the commission, but they are available at the event page that are recorded. And uh, what is specific for uh, these webinars that your access provides is that uh, all of the speakers are very experienced uh, uh, your access members and they are available uh, for any questions, further advice and support to all that watch the webinar and can uh, later on contact the speaker. This is the difference from uh, what uh, we offer at your access. And most of the speakers are even mentors in our program. So for instance, what I can see as a very important point here, uh, many of your access people are also uh, Maria Curie NCPs. So uh, in regard of the recently announced by the commissioner Gabriel uh, financing through Maria Curie program that is very competitive I would uh, see uh, that our Euraxis members that are NCPs are able to take at least one uh, Ukrainian researcher that is interested to apply to Maria Curie. Uh, of course, fully for free, all your access uh, services are free uh, and uh, support the application. Show them importance, what are the um, main uh, um, uh, specifics in this program, uh, what should be stressed and what should be avoided. Also, we'll guide them to find the hosting institution uh, where they can together prepare the proposal. Uh, one of the speakers in these um, uh, webinars is actually such an NCP, a very, very devoted person from Cyprus, uh, Pierre Antonio Papazoglu. He is available at any possible time to support uh, who, whoever is interested. Uh, so let us continue. Uh, since I don't see uh, the lady, I understand the situation in Ukraine and I understand that she cannot um, deal uh, with her time properly at the moment. So for now, we will continue with our uh, plan. And once she joins, she will be able uh, to, to be given the floor. Uh, meanwhile, do you have any questions for now from our mentors to Sasha or someone else? I don't see raised hand and I don't see anyone opening the microphone directly. You are allowed. This meeting is unofficial, so you just open the microphone and speak. Okay, then we will continue now. We stopped here. Uh, uh, with the last slide about the uh, update on the program and now we will, we will continue with uh, what a researcher, for instance, from Ukraine can do after they can join, uh, they join the program and uh, in order to be uh, faster integrated in the program and how to get the best out of it. And as it is written in there, and I, I, I made a smiley here, <laughs> uh, it's a, a same formula for every single activity you have. You have to be just active. In everything you do, you have to be active. Um, 
there is an automatic matching. Yes, there is a tool. It works every single uh, minute and looks for your perfect match. But it looks exactly for your perfect match. And if it doesn't find it, the tool will not inform you. It will inform you only for the perfect match. What you can do is to program the searching engine and to lower the number, for instance, uh, limit only to mentor and to main research area, those criteria. And then the automatic matching will uh, send you much more uh, options for a mentor. So for now, the numbers show that uh, most of the mentors wait after the registration. They don't do anything. They wait someone to contact them. They wait for automatic matching or whatever. More or less, this is reasonable. But there are others that join this program and want to be supportive, not to just wait. So what they, what they did, they used this uh, search engine, they program it, they looked manually for, for a mentee, and they managed within one year to train five, even some of them, seven mentees. Others, of course, didn't have any. But what is more surprising is that most of the, of the mentees do the same. And here there is no really understandable reason. Why did you join the program if you just stay and wait? What are you waiting for? If you want to have a mentor, you have to be the active site. So what did the most active people? They had more than three mentors for one year. They have different uh, views and uh, uh, different type of support from different mentors. And this helped them much more than just staying and doing nothing. So what should do the mentee? The first thing is explore the functionalities of the uh, website. Once you register, you have access to this uh, huge database of 800 researchers. You have to explore the functionalities and to think how to use them in your best uh, uh, benefit. If you have difficulties, just reach to us. Save your search option. As I said, only with the uh, criteria mentor, find the mentor and find the mentor in a specific area. If you limit this, uh, the search engine to these two criteria and save this search option, every next time she runs the machine, every one minute, it will look not for your perfect match, but it will look for match only the two, these two criteria. This is very important because this way you receive much longer list of uh, um, suitable mentors for you. And when you ask mentorship by pressing the yellow button, please do at least two at a time because this mentor, one of them could be engaged at the moment and could not respond uh, positively. If both of them respond positively, then I will follow with instructions. Uh, and the next step is of course, to prepare for the first meeting. Even before your, uh, you have a contact with the mentee confirmed men mentorship, you have to prepare. Menti has to prepare at least a short CV in order to send it to uh, their future mentor, have to be ready to talk about uh, their research interest, motivation to joining this program, difficulties that they have and problems that they have. They have to also draft their mentoring uh, plan uh, choosing three of the predefined uh, topics and adding topics, at least three, and adding, adding topics that are of interest for uh, the researcher. 
And once uh, there is a match to and uh, confirmation on the site of the mentor, to send this draft mentoring plan in advance before the first meeting, in order the mentor to be uh, prepared for the first meeting and to say whether he or she is able to cover this plan. Also, you have to list your questions to the mentor for the first meeting in order not to forget something important and to lose the opportunity. You have only six meetings within six month period. So uh, this is a, a list of uh, these uh, uh, six predefined topics. And you, of course, add here your interests and uh, questions and subtopics for each topic. This is a work before the first meeting. So you don't have to just stay after registration, but work. Um, this is an example, just uh, how uh, one of your colleagues prepared for uh, uh, his first uh, meeting by listing these questions to a specific topic. During the first meeting, you also have some uh, few points here listed in order not to forget. So from time to time, check with this presentation and be sure, are you um, in line with uh, our recommendations? If you follow them, everything will be fine and you will get most out of this mentoring. So you have to shortly present yourself and your interests. You have to ask all of the questions that you are interested in for, for the first meeting and for the every next, uh, depending on the topic, you have to list uh, specific questions. You have to, disc and don't forget, send these questions in advance to your mentor in order him or uh, he or she to be prepared. You have to discuss with the mentor your proposal for the mentoring plan and see whether he or she can cover all of these topics, what other topics can cover and when, uh, whether he or she has um, interesting, su interesting suggestion for you as a topic that might uh, change one of yours. You may also agree with them or on a longer mentorship this mentorship has to be at least six months, but you have to, uh, you may agree to have a longer one and you can add more topics. This is a very often case with some of the mentors and uh, mentoring couples actually. Then you agree on the adjustments of the plan and agree on the final plan. Then make clear, very clear for you, what you have to prepare for the next meeting. What is expected from you? Ask more and more questions until you are certain that for the next meeting, you will be prepared. Then agree on time and date. Pretty much is valid for the mentors with very few differences. Mentors, of course, also have to explore the functionalities if they want to be the active site. More or less, mentors expect uh, to be contacted by the mentees, the mentee to be the active site, but there are many mentors that are active themselves. And this meeting is exactly to call to all mentors to be the active site in supporting the Ukrainian researchers and to look and find immediately the first possible mentee for, for your mentoring right now. Uh, then we come to the preparation. These are mostly the same stuff as for the mentees. What is different here is to prepare to suggest 
topics that you can be very useful and that are not predefined. This is very important because sometimes uh, Menti thinks that something is important for them, but you may have another view on this. And you may suggest even uh, not the whole topic, but maybe a subtopic that is important for his career or for his uh, uh, <coughs> dissertation plan. Then at the first meeting, mentor more or less leads it. So be prepared to lead, be prepared to discuss and make clear why the uh, mentee suggests specific topics. Why? M this may be important, his motivation or her motivation in order to suggest this topic. And you may agree or may disagree and may, may make a better proposal for them. And be very specific when uh, you ask your mentee how to prepare and what to prepare for the next meeting. For both of you, make sure you read all of the materials and watch all of the videos that we sent. This is maybe sometimes boring because this is not practical. I mean, if it is a practical uh, advice, it sounds different. Guidances usually sound very general but they are still very important. You have to follow all ethical principles of the mentoring program. Otherwise mentorship is not uh, successful. And bear in mind, especially with an Ukrainian researcher, this, uh, this country is at war. They may have psychological problems. They may have emotional problems. So, you give them time to adjust. You support them by offering opportunity to talk and to share. This is a simple thing, but still, you see with people that are at war, it is very important. And uh, kind of uh, overarching, uh, slides that uh, we are all engaged in this program in building the global research community. And by entering this mentoring program, you support this building. I made a very, uh, maybe funny, uh, few access pictures uh, uh, graph scheme uh, how the mentoring path, um, path starts from contact uh, from all over the globe and then uh, through assistance and career growth, it makes friends and colleagues for uh, longer cooperation. Just an illustration for our mentoring path. Uh, this is a slide devoted, uh, a slide that I chose from uh, uh, your access conference. Uh, the, the template was arranged as a supporting um, Ukrainian's uh, colors for everyone that uh, presented at uh, this uh, conference. And uh, what I, uh, why I use this um, slide here with these appealing uh, colors is to, to um, ask the mentees from Ukraine to register. Uh, the registration is quite longer process, but this is long because you have to put all of your um, criteria that after that, the program uh, and the automatic tool looks through the system for you and gives this uh, information to other participants. So when you register, you put an abbreviation 
UA, this is abbreviation of uh, your country, next to your name. For example, Alexandra, Sasha will have to add after her name uh, UA and that, that will allow all the mentors to understand that Alexandra is actually a Ukrainian researcher, although she might be based in another country at the moment and look for, uh, ask for her, request her men mentorship. All the mentors, please look for this kind of abbreviation and consider at first point taking uh, a mentee from Ukraine. This is it from my side, Sasha. Do you see our uh, colleague from uh, um, no, unfortunately, I do not see her. And she's okay, she might not be able to join now. But what we can do, we can ask her uh, to prepare a presentation or prepare just a word document with uh, uh, what she can uh, she have to has to share with us. And uh, then we will add this uh, document and this material to the event uh, page and uh, her contacts, of course, in order someone if they have questions. I know that Elitza has something to share with us and then I will give you the floor. Elitza, please. Tell us about your conference and opportunity to share at this conference with uh, your uh, about Ukrainian uh, support for Ukrainian researchers. Are you here with us, Eli? If you're trying to talk, we don't hear you because it is un uh, your microphone is not unmuted. I see that you try, but for some reason we don't hear. Maybe until you fix it, we can listen a uh, few words from uh, Professor Trajanovic, my colleague from Serbia that is actually uh, supporting, uh, supporting us and working with us together with uh, Professor Zoraki from Greece. We worked in uh, two projects for refugees together, and we use our experience now to help uh, Ukrainian researchers, and they join my efforts at this. Miro, Rania, please share a few words about our experience and what was the best in uh, um, what we offered in Bridge Project. Yes, I think uh, important is that uh, uh, the um, Ukrainian researchers create a very fast a network that uh, with uh, the rest of the European researchers and institutes that is going to help them in several issues, not all order to apply for a specific um, vacancy because there are already many vacancies in Europe and in uh, especially in Scandinavian countries and in many other countries of Europe. But um, it is also important to have support in several issues, uh, like to improve their skills, to in how to apply, how to um, improve some specific skills. Uh, but also, uh, I think uh, that it is uh, important, uh, this uh, program of the mentors and mentees, because I have actively participated in that program the last year and I have given many advices to the researchers, but also on the other hand, I have received a feedback from them and that I think it's also very important. For instance, I, I, meant, I, I, have, I was mentor of a student from China. And then he gave to the rest of the mentees, first because I had a group of mentees, he gave to the rest of the mentees the information how they can apply for a PhD in China. Because they, there are enough money for uh, PhDs from abroad, but there are specific uh, regulations or a specific um, 
um, procedure that you have to follow. So the, uh, for that reason, I think it's very important to search the your access platform, all this uh, to get familiar with the tools that they are available, and also to search for the right uh, mentors for you. It's going to be very he uh, helpful, and I think you have to work fast to be fast on that. Because the time is running and these procedures take uh, um, uh, takes enough time. At the same time, my opinion in, is that uh, it's um, uh, since you are familiar with uh, uh, working from uh, home or uh, working away from the office, it's an, an opportunity for the Ukrainian researchers uh, to. Um, uh, to publish, to, to work, to do work with the literature review, to do things that they are they can't do without uh, their their presence in the office. So, if you have any questions or whatever from the University of the Aegean, um, please send me an email. Um, Ms. Svetlana Dimitrova can give you uh, my contact details. Yes, yes, I will list them in in the final version of the. Uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Rania. Sasha has a question. Yeah, um, it's not necessarily a question, but a remark uh, and an advice to all mentors that are present here or would like to participate. I think that it's very important to understand that the majority of scientists that will be registering, they will be based in Ukraine or they will be at the moment abroad, yet looking for opportunities to come back to Ukraine eventually. The majority really want to come back. Uh, that's why it is important, although of course it's very important to look for funding, uh, but, and there are a lot of opportunities, uh, but they are particularly interested in ways of supporting Ukrainian universities. So digital mobility collaboration grants that can be coordinated from Ukraine, where Ukraine can, Ukrainian university can be uh, uh, an equal partner or have a good role. And it's not that easy to find them. So while you are accepting mentees, especially those that will be looking for funding. It makes sense to straight away um, um, orient and look in those specific calls that Ukraine is suitable, uh, uh, applicable, uh, that, that is U Ukrainian scientists are uh, eligible for, especially considering that like the cost action, now they're a full member. And I'm sure that in the coming weeks, the status of Ukrainian universities will be changing. Um, yeah, and also, uh, of course, uh, uh, it's very important. So, uh, another aspect also uh, that, um, um, yeah, um, not everyone, um, of course, it's important to be very fast, but also the situation is very unstable. Not everyone has access to uh, um, even to computer and various resources. So it's also important. And another aspect, how to work and continue being uh, productive in a stressful and changing environment, because that's another, especially for young researchers, it's very difficult to manage because they cannot plan and the support is becoming unstable. So they need to learn and find efficient and fast way how to evolve and develop in highly unstable environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks very much, Sasha. Miro, can you uh, share about so, the uh, uh, small grants that we had in... Uh... Yes, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be part of this meeting. Uh, let me share my experience working with the uh, refugee researchers. And uh, of course, I am also included in mentoring program, but since uh, we uh, heard enough to, uh, about mentoring program. I will speak about my experience uh, from the project Bridge and Bridge 2. Even I, I was not uh, uh, permanently part of project Bridge, I was in the project Bridge 2. And one of the best activities, I mean, uh, according to opinion of uh, refugee researchers, was uh, uh, internship program. The aim of internship program is to offer opportunity to displaced the researchers to get uh, to get connected with the employee employers employers and to eventually get a job. 
uh, for uh, uh, people which are displaced, it's very important to have some financial support uh, in the in the beginning of being uh, out of country. So uh, what I want to propose is to urge European Union to op to offer a similar uh, similar mechanism for uh, refugees from Ukraine uh, being displaced now in some of EU countries. Why it is very important? First of all, they get some money, which is, I, I assume, for many of them very important in, uh, uh, in the beginning of being out of the country. And second, uh, it allows them to make uh, networking with the, um, with the companies, with the uh, employers, and to, uh, let's say, continue in one expressway uh, their career. Of course, uh, this is not uh, the final aim. It is just some, uh, let's say, way for smooth transition from one country to other country. Uh, and integration in the local labor market. Yes, of course. Uh, and the uh, second uh, uh, message that I would like to pass, we had uh, uh, during the uh, project Bridge 2, we made a couple of, uh, of reports. And one is a very interesting, it is report about uh, it's a report about opportunities to get uh, a job in uh, in European uh, uh, Union, especially for researchers. And uh, I I know that Svetlana ha uh, has uh, this report. And please use any mechanism to share it with the uh, with the uh, Ukraine's uh, researchers. Okay, I will. Yes, I will. it's very useful material because there are a list of maybe uh, almost one hundred of different uh, different uh, funds or foundation which are offering or helping. Uh, refugee researchers for a uh, for a uh, research opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it is all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Miroslav. Okay, uh, Delica, are you able to speak now? We don't hear you. We, we still don't hear you. Not really. Maybe your mic is uh, broken. You just switch it off and uh, try another one if you have at hand. No, not yet. Okay, meanwhile, I give you the floor to ask questions to different uh, people that spoke now. Um, Svetlana, let me give you advice to Elisa. Elisa, try to join the meeting using mobile phone and we can, I, I'm sure we can hear you. Yeah, also option. Yeah, maybe also help. Okay, uh, there are some uh, few, very few, I expected actually much more Ukrainian researchers to join today. But still, we have some with us. Do you have any questions or any clarification on what was said? For instance, you can share uh, your uh, uh, own situation, uh, your own needs, and I can later on suggest you a mentor or another kind of support that is needed specifically for you. Uh, you hear me now? 
Uh, yes, Ali. Uh, okay, I will wait. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to interrupt mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. I, it was just a question to, to uh, Ukrainian researchers if they need some clarification or if they have a question or request. Mm. Oha, Roman, Vasil, Anna, don't be shy. We are trying here to, to find the best way to help you. And uh, if you say us, if you tell us what, what you would like most, we are ready to support you. Sasha, meanwhile, here is uh, Professor Kalfat Rafik is uh, the researcher that looks for uh, his uh, Ukrainian colleague uh, that I sent you a request earlier. So if you have any news, you can share. Uh, I, I haven't uh, any news uh, until now. And uh, the, the other question, Svetlana, I want uh, to ask, uh, can we uh, help uh, uh, Doctor, doctorants or students uh, so uh, before uh, contacting uh, their uh, their supervisor i don't know if it's possible yes it is yes it is possible uh, uh, so, because uh, if they if they are engaged in one uh, thesis in one work uh, research work we can't uh, change uh, their uh, of course but most of the cases um the we have main... we have to to contact the the supervisor uh, first and then we can uh, receive uh, the students uh, but we, have, uh, we have we have we have to contact the supervisor to have to have its uh, agreement for the subject for the yes this uh, is important when you work in the same area but uh, it's more or less the the mentoring has a bit different role than uh, uh, guiding them through their uh, topic. Yeah. Uh, their uh, PI still keeps uh, his or her role in uh, their uh, research on the specific theme for uh, their thesis. But the mentor helps also with some of the additional topics that are very important for general research career, like publications, uh, how to prepare yes. for uh, speaking in a conference, uh, many other topics that are how to apply for specific grants. For instance, I definitely think for Maria Curie, in order these researchers from Ukraine to apply, they will need a specific guidance. And in this regard, I really think that uh, we need uh, at your access pay attention to this fact because 2 million euro that are uh, actually devoted to these uh, individual fellowships. You understand those of you that are Maria Curie NCPs, you understand this very well. They need the guidance. Otherwise, these millions will stay not used because it's not an easy program. Individual fellowship is a very tough uh, and competitive uh, yes, program. I totally agree with you also with the contacts. So we have a lot of contacts with um, uh, young scientists that are at the moment abroad. Yeah. Uh, so, but yet uh, affiliated with Ukrainian universities still work for them and planning to return. So those are usually the ones because they are in relatively uh, stable environment. Usually they are the most proactive one with respect to mm -hmm. uh, grant application because they're- Also they Maria stable. Curie alumni. Definitely. Yes, definitely. I'm, I'm also one of them that, that how, uh, yeah. So, so I, I came from Ukraine. I was fortunate to be guided 
And it's very important to indicate, as you in nicely pointed at specific aspects that should be highlighted that are not necessarily very difficult, aspects, but they the points that uh, increase the success rate of an application. Yes, because right. those, yeah. Yeah, so specifically for scientists that are either abroad or uh, internally displaced to the areas from where they can at the moment. Okay, thank you very much, Carmen. Please publish this also uh, on uh, uh, Science for Ukraine uh, platform when it is announced in order to be available because this is a very well known platform by Ukrainian researchers and when they are especially uh, on, on the way they have only one phone with them and it is easy to look for the, uh, something that they know and if your offer is listed in science for Ukraine um, they will easily find it so Carmen, make sure you publish not only on your access website, but also on uh, Science for Ukraine. In general, uh, colleagues that uh, are from your access here, publish on your access portal, you are obliged to. This is understandable. But also duplicate the publication on uh, Science for Ukraine because it is, as Sasha said, concentrated and focused, and Ukrainian researchers look there. So please do. If they don't know about your access platform, they will not see it. But they know about science for Ukraine, and they will look for it there. So Elitza, maybe it's uh, time for you finally. <laughs> I'm so sorry about my technical issues. <laughs> uh, okay, now you hear me, I'll be as brief as possible. I just want to share with you uh, um, that uh, in connection with the mentorship program, I'm part of it. Uh, my uh, mentor, Professor Ajit Singh from Patna's uh, Women's College uh, invited me to uh, give a talk in their upcoming conference. Uh, and I, you could uh, see it um, uh, here in, uh, in the EuroAccess uh, Mentorship Program. Uh, so this is the conference and you could uh, attend absolutely free. Uh, you just need to register. It's called Empowering Smart Future Through Scientific Development and Technology. So here is the link. I'm going to, to share it also here in the chat. Uh, so if you'd like, you can join. Uh, it will be in the beginning of May. Uh, it will be like, uh, as it says, at 5th to 7th May. So uh, yes, this is uh, also a product uh, from, from the... Um, uh, mentorship program. So I'm uh, happy and I encourage uh, mentors and mentees <laughs> to participate in this Your Access initiative. And thank you to you, Svetlana, for, uh, for inviting me to take a part uh, in uh, this. Please, uh, Elita, share uh, once you are uh, given the floor there. Uh, share about Science for Ukraine okay. uh, platform and uh, make sure that all of the participants understand how important it is to uh, join the mentoring program and to offer remote mm -hmm. uh, work and uh, remote fellowships and grants. Okay, I will write it down. Uh... Okay. Not only uh, here, we will list it in the uh, materials from this meeting. So you'll have a um, concentrated document that you can uh, share there. Okay, I'll definitely do it. I will uh, mention about Science for Ukraine platform and also I will admire them. I will encourage them to offer mostly remote positions, right? 
Yes, remote okay. positions, remote grants with um, uh, Ukrainian universities and research centers. And uh, what is important for others as well, if you participate at any other type of conference like Elitza, just do the same. Sasha, please. Uh, yeah, I have a question regarding the conference. Uh, could you please clarify so that um, a free conference? Uh, would you please repeat uh, a bit could louder you, your question? Yeah, could you please clarify the conference that you listed? Is it a free conference? Yes, it's absolutely free. You yeah. can participate for free. If you'd like to give a talk, if you'd like to give a presentation, yeah. it costs yeah, like $5. I'm, I'm asking, yeah. It's like almost for free. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, because um, a lot of Ukrainian scientists at the moment, so they are looking for conferences where so, so for results that they acquire, so the, uh, um, uh, they are looking for conferences where they can present. And one of the conferences that is happening later this week um uh in germany uh is dedicated to them there were really a lot of submissions from ukraine so i was wondering if it might be possible to attend this conference that you mentioned for free or with situation waiver for ukrainian scientists if it is uh or maybe if it's possible to um we can try to get a, a financial support to cover there those five euro registration fee then it would be, it's very important to promote it because many of them probably would like to participate if it's not too late. Yeah, this is a good question, Elitza, and you can discuss it with your Indian mentor. Uh, yes, I could discuss it, but uh, it will be nice if you have uh, some list of uh, people who would like to attend, for example. Uh, because it's uh, quite uh, near, it's like in two weeks. The So if you... Um, if you have any idea for the people who we can already... open a call, and yes, we, can, think... we can open a call on uh, Science for Ukraine, and uh, whoever is interested can just apply there, and uh, then we will give, uh, let's say, a uh, week before to to Ajit. Yes, I think he will be very pleased to to help. Mm -hmm. This is good. Sasha, we can um, discuss it later again. Okay, we can discuss it. I, uh, yes, Svetlana also has the email of Ajit and he's very open. So I, I mm -hmm. think he mm -hmm. will support this uh, wonderful idea. Yeah, he's one of our best mentors actually. Okay. Um, please put a link for registration in the chat straight away. Yes, it's there. You could, you could see it. Uh, it's this one uh, at three uh, three forty seven. If you see, could you please put it in the chat? Yes, it is already in the chat. I will put it once again. Oh, yes. I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't see it. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I put it once again so we can see it. It starts with the docs.google.com. It is also a post in uh, here. Here in the group. Mm -hmm. Okay. Someone else with questions and uh, need more clarification or just want to share some comment? I don't see any raised hands here. I suppose after this uh, meeting, we will have new registrations in the mentoring program. If you need any support during the process of registration or after that, just do not forget this recording. Also the materials from the meeting today, together with some extra materials uh, from me and Sasha and from uh, the lady from Young Scientist, uh, Evgenia, uh, will be um, also edited. Um, what I will make sure will be a list of how you personally can support. So uh, if you don't have any other remarks or questions, 
I would suggest to close this meeting and uh, during our next monthly meeting in May, maybe end of May because um, uh, before that I uh, have a lot of other stuff to do and uh, only end of May is possible as a next meeting. We will try to summarize what is done and what could be else done for Ukrainian researchers and uh, maybe raise some topics that are interest of them. I will add such a question in the uh, survey about our monthly meetings. So uh, whoever is interested can uh, put in there in the survey what uh, are suggested topics for the next meeting. Okay, and uh, we will think with Sasha uh, inviting someone, especially if there is, uh, what I'm sure uh, there is a Ukrainian researcher in the program already um, registered very recently. She's a mentor, uh, she's based outside of uh, Ukraine at the moment and uh, we may invite her next time to talk and to encourage more uh, researchers to join. Okay, thank you everyone for now. Uh, it was nice to, to talk to you and especially I'm thankful for to Sasha for um, inviting uh, the uh, Ukrainian officials to talk today. And we will be uh, in touch with everyone that is interested to support. Bye for now. Bye.